Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And I thought we'd deviate from that today. Uh, instead of looking at the lessons that are assigned, uh, and there's some good ones from Esther, Acts of the Apostles, and Luke, and of course from Samuel, but I want to talk a little bit about today's saint, because today on the new calendar is the feast of St. Clair of Assisi. Now on the old calendar, her feast day was actually tomorrow. So either way, we're good. St. Clair is a wonderful saint for us to commemorate. So who's St. Clair? Well, St. Clair is most frequently associated, of course, with St. Francis of Assisi uh, because she really uh, came to light of her uh, vocation uh, through the ministry of St. Francis. Uh, she was born in the late uh, 12th century. Uh, she was a young woman. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, the late, uh, late uh, 11, 1100s. Uh, and at the age of 18, she heard a sermon by none other than St. Francis of Assisi, and her heart was warmed and encouraged to follow this apostolic way of life that St. Francis of Assisi was promoting. Now, what was crazy was that going through that period, St. Francis had such a magnetic attraction to get people to give up the worldliness that was all around them and to sell everything they had and come and follow Jesus. All the world was going after him. And in fact, uh, he ended up having to establish a second, a third order of people who could follow a rule of life, who couldn't leave their families for, for obvious reasons, uh, especially if they were married and had children uh, or their jobs and, and for the good of society. Uh, but so many did that. They sold, they just sold everything they had uh, and left and followed Francis and his order grew by gangbusters. Well, of course, that same apostolic zeal was an attraction to women as well. And St. Clair was one of them. Now, in the 13th century, it just wasn't possible for women to live the type of vocation that Francis felt called to, which was to live in absolute and utter poverty, asleep on the floors of churches, to travel from town to town preaching the gospel. Uh, and even by the end of Francis's earthly life, um, that zeal uh, had to be tamped down a bit because towns just couldn't have 50 or 60 men who were begging door to door uh, and, and sleeping in the floors of churches uh, and abandoning every other way in which to support themselves and the community. Uh, and so the order was able to get a bit more organized and, and later uh, leadership would help to do that. Um, but Claire was really deeply moved. And so Francis seeing this, and we'll talk a little bit about the, that great conversion moment, but Francis seeing this uh, in this woman, Claire, at first took him took her and put her in a Benedictine convent uh, temporarily uh, and then developed with her a rule of life uh, to live this the life of utter poverty and identification with the poor in the same way that Jesus Christ the Son of Man had no place to lay his head uh, and so this this sense of of feeling that the poverty would help them in a radical way to identify with Christ and therefore to help to minister to others. Uh, for the sake of the second order, however, they couldn't do that out uh, as what they call mendicants, right? People who live out in the community uh, and work out in the community like the Franciscan friars could do, or the Dominicans for that matter. Um, so the second order that Francis helped uh, Claire to establish uh, was more enclosed, more cloistered, and yet their work interacted and intersected with the prayer for the rest of the orders and for the church that really made an impact into the life of the church. There are still poor clares uh, to this day, both in the Roman church uh, and I think parts of the Anglican community now. I, I do have to tell the story. I may have mentioned this last year. We had a wonderful order of poor clares in the Episcopal church. They were called the poor clares of reparation. And unfortunately, the order uh, did not foster the vocations that it needed to continue. And I had the great grace to be able to interact with the sisters uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, before I went to seminary and kept in correspondence with them while I was in seminary. Uh, and they were a real blessing to me, but it was always really a comfort to know that they were praying for me regularly as the sisters would write and let me know. And that was their part, big part of their ministry. So anyway, tune in today for Mass and hear the actual biography about St. Clair of Assisi uh, and how it is that she came to this vocation and how it is that God used her to greater glorify himself. So today is Thursday, which means, of course, we have Holy Communion at 9 o'clock today. So please do check in, uh, join us. I, that would be perfect. If not, then, then watch us online. And I hope that your Thursday is full of blessings.